Okay, so this these are all the materials that I used to create this little pendant. As you can see it's an owl. And here we go. Its eyes kind of move around. Not very well, but if you shake it, it does that. And it's uh, kind of a necklace, but here are some earrings to match it. Because I like to have matching earrings with any pendant that I wear. And uh, the size of this thing isn't that big. It's actually pretty light. Really light, uh, even though it has plaster inside. <clears throat> and um, as you can see, it's made of all kinds of different beads. And most of them are Toho beads. Here are the numbers. Those that aren't numbered aren't Toho. They are just some random Chinese beads. Very cheap and not very uniform, but for this purpose they are perfectly okay. These in the bottle are also some kind of Chinese. Um, and the good thing about this kind of pendant is that you can uh, use leftover beads and um, create something very nice. So this is uh, a project that I did for the first time and um, well it's kind of a... Uh, ouch! Uh, it's uh, <clears throat> kind of a training project maybe but I'm going to make another one similar um, maybe as a gift for a friend or something like that and uh, I thought that I could film the process. It's not really a tutorial because I'm not very good at this, but um, as a process it might be interesting for others. So the size of this, as you can see, these are centimeters. So it's about six centimeters by something like two and a half. Right. And also it's, um, it's not flat. It's kind of roundish. It has ultra suede on the back side. Okay. And uh, also what you need for this project are foundations. Uh sorry. Findings, findings. Yeah. Um so a clasp and some hooks for the earrings. Uh these are just um I think copper uh, and uh, they're good for me but if you have a problem with uh, wearing mm, copper then naturally you'd like some more precious metals okay the this is the thread it's a beading thread it's uh, very strong but very expensive so I am trying to save it and end up uh, you know stitching with a tiny little tail left. Now this one is a wire. This one is golden, it doesn't really matter. The only thing I used it for is to kind of hold the shape of this earring because um, it's not very... Uh, I mean if you just thread these things they kind of uh, tend to uh, lose any shape and uh, stick in all directions and uh, to keep it kind of roundish you'd like this kind of uh, you'd like to put a wire in there uh, also this bead in the center of the earrings uh, I bought it off um, some Pakistani sale uh, we have this uh, in Moscow um, people from India or Pakistan often sell a very cheap beads and they're already uh, strung on a thread uh, so usually you can just buy a, 
a thread of beads and wear them as a necklace, or you can cut it up and use it in your projects. Uh, that's what I do. Uh, also, well, of course, uh, I use some kind of tools like uh, the crimper and uh, the cutter. Yeah, uh, and the materials that I used for uh, the bead embroidery here are lacy stiff stuff, this thing, and ultra sweater, uh, which I used for the backing here. What I like about it is that it's seriously pitch black. It doesn't reflect any light. It's very nice. Now, what's important about the beads that you use, uh, as you can see there, I used lots of them and of course you don't have to, even if you decide to create a similar thing, you don't have to use exactly the same beads. Uh, but it makes sense to uh, pick uh, uh, a lot of shades of beads that are kind of matching. So, uh, for example, uh, you can see that I've got here uh, three or four um, kinds of beads that are kind of um, petroleum-like with those rainbow rainbow coloring and these are shiny and these are matte and also uh, it's um, very nice that for example these beads and these beads are exactly the same color but they are different size. This one is 11 and this one is 15. And uh, the same concerns, for example, these two. So they are very similar in color, but this one is 11 and this one is 15 and so on. And uh, this is important because uh, sometimes when you are filling these shapes in the in your embroidery, you don't have uh, much space, so you, when you have such corners, or somewhere here, I don't know if you can see this, but you see that I used larger beads, and then by the edge I used smaller beads, so that I could fill the space and it won't be white, but uh, it, uh, a, a larger bead wouldn't fit here. So what you probably want to have is uh, two sizes of beads in similar color. Also, for the pores, you might want to get some kind of beads that are in two similar shades. So in my case, they were these two. That's Toho 2F and 2CF. As you can see, they're very similar, both matte, both small, but they uh, are different just a little bit uh, by the tone, and so it creates this kind of volume effect. Well, um, that's it about the materials, and we'll talk a little bit later.